The first technique that enables us to approach publish subscribe problems or event driven schemes in a consistent way and uh, in a way that is standardized and well documented is the observer pattern. This is one of the most famous of the so-called design patterns which were publicized initially by a book published in 94 by Eric Gamma, uh, Helm, Johnson and uh, Flissinus known uh, sometimes affectionately as the uh, Gang of Four. And the idea of a design pattern, as described in this book and uh, a number of other books, is that it's a kind of best practice. It's a scheme, a way of building systems, a form of architecture that experts in the field have identified as something that has been proved to work under many different circumstances for many different problems to address a particular kind of issue. So here the general issue is how to provide a publish, subscribe, or event-driven scheme and Observer provides a, a general solution. The kind of problem for which the Observer pattern works well is the kind of problem reviewed in the last segment in which we have a publisher that can produce some instances of a certain event type and uh, we might of course have several publishers and on the other side, we have a number of observers that are there waiting for some of these events to occur and are going to react when an event of interest to them occurs. The observer pattern is going to function in the following way. Uh, according to this architectural description, which involves a number of classes that you have to organize, as shown here, and integrate in your application. So the, uh, the basic classes are deferred classes, publisher and subscriber. These are not yet going to provide the functionality directly, but they're going to provide the abstractions. The publisher is a deferred class, which describes the general notion of a software element that is able to produce events. And the subscriber is, again, a deferred class that describes the general notion of objects that are able to register for certain event types and react when events of the given event type occur. So the actual uh, relationship between publisher and subscriber is shown here. We are going for a publisher to have the ability to attach a certain subscriber, but the way it will usually work is the other way around. That is to say a subscriber is itself going to subscribe to, the, uh, to a particular publisher using the attach features of a publisher. Now, when it comes to having specific elements in your software that will act as publishers or subscribers, you are going to write classes that inherit respectively from publisher and subscriber. Here I'm showing first the classes that inherit from publisher. I'm showing them as inheriting directly, but of course they could inherit indirectly. These may be new classes that you write specifically for the occasion, or it might be that you take an existing class in your system, pub1, and make it a descendant, direct or indirect, of publisher. And on the subscriber side, it's going to be the same thing. That is to say, if you want particular elements of your software to be able to subscribe to certain event types as represented by a publisher, then you are going to write a specific class, sub1 or sub2, as a descendant of subscriber, or you are going to make an existing class a descendant of subscriber. And we are going to see how it works internally, but in terms of the overall architecture, uh, this is the basic idea. You are going to have publisher classes and subscriber classes. In relation to the way the problem was described in the previous segment, we can see that for each publisher there is an event type. So this is the connection. A publisher is able to produce events of a certain type. It's possible to make things a bit more sophisticated by having publishers that can publish events of different types, but let's stick to the simple scheme in which each publisher object, and in fact each publisher class, that is uh, each specific descendant of publisher, is responsible for a particular kind of event. So pub1 is responsible maybe for publishing mouse clicks, pub2 for publishing key presses, and so on. Again, this is a bit restrictive and you can do it in a more flexible way, 
where that will be good enough for our purposes for the moment. So how does it work? Well, a particular publisher, of course, is going to know about its subscribers, but that's, that's internal. Uh, fundamentally, the uh, basic operation for a publisher is publish, which is an effective feature, it's actually implemented, and the fundamental feature for subscribers is update, and update is the internal operation that is going to be used whenever an event of the type that the subscriber is interested in occurs. So basically, the way you subscribe is that you say, whenever an event of a certain type, say mouse click, occurs, I want my procedure update to execute. And you, now you see why update at the level of subscriber is a deferred procedure. It's because, of course, it's a, a, just a general concept at that point. And what's going to happen is that each particular kind of subscriber, like sub1, like uh, sub2, is going to have its own version of updates. So one particular widget, for example, the OK button, is going to have its own update procedure, which says whenever the user left clicks the mouse, I want to execute whatever operation has to be done as a result of OK, so maybe save a file or something like that. And then sub2 is attached to another widget, for example, the map, which has its own idea of what should happen when the user mouse clicks on the, on the map. And so it's going to have its own update uh, procedure, which is applicable to such cases, to, to such events in this context. So that is the overall scheme. Internally, there is a very important data structure, even though it's written here in a small font. It's the glue uh, between the two sides of uh, this uh, picture in the element that makes the, the whole thing function. It's a list of subscribers. So we call it subscribe. And it's a structure that is internal to the publisher. Maybe the picture doesn't show it completely clearly, but subscribe is, of course, a feature of this class, publisher. Okay? And this is what enables each publisher to keep internally a list of all the subscribers that have subscribed to it. So for example, the publisher of the left click event, an object of course, here we're talking about the runtime objects, is going to have internally a list of all the elements that are interested in the left click event. And then for each subscriber that wants to subscribe to this event type is going to execute the procedure subscribe and you can already guess what subscribe is about where what subscribe does internally subscribe is in uh, simply internally going to add the current subscriber object to the list subscribe of the corresponding corresponding publisher in this example the uh, publisher for the left click and so you see why it is actually from the left to the right that we have this client relation between publisher and subscriber. Of course, it's perhaps you felt it a bit strange that it uh, should be the publisher that is the client of subscriber uh, rather than subscriber being a client of publisher. Well, actually, subscriber can also be a client of publisher, but the main relation is shown here is because the publisher is going to attach a subscriber to itself by adding it to its subscribe list and of course if the subscriber changes its mind and wants later on to unsubscribe then in that case the uh, publisher will execute detach but that is the way things happen internally it's the publisher that attaches or detaches subscribers of course conceptually from the outside we want to look at it the other way around we want to think of the subscriber a particular subscriber deciding to subscribe itself to a publisher. And so that's why we, in fact, also have a, a client relation the other way around, which, which is not shown originally on the figure to keep it simple. But internally, what subscribe does is that it's going to call attach, and what unsubscribe does is that it's going to call detach. So now we see the details of what I just explained.
this is just in code what I explained informally. As we saw in class publisher, we have this list subscribe. I've represented here as a linked list. Of course, any other implementation of lists would do as well. Now, when an observer decides to become interested in a certain event type, it will execute the subscriber procedure subscribe. And you remember that subscribe is in class subscriber and hence in the descendants of class subscriber. This is an effective feature. It's completely defined at the level of the deferred class subscriber. And in fact, we have the text of that procedure a few lines down. What does subscribe do? Well, I'm subscribing myself to a publisher P. And what I want to do is that I want the current object to become a subscriber of P to observe P, in other words. And so what we need to do is to tell the publisher, hey you, publisher, hey you, uh, for example, left-click publisher, uh, register me among your observers, among your subscribers. And so we are doing, going to do P dot attach of current. What is current? It's the current subscriber object. And of course, attach in class publisher expects an argument of type subscribe. This is only possible if P is not void. We want to non void publish. So that's the internal glue to make subscribers able to subscribe to a publisher. And what is attached? Well, uh, we already saw it informally. We, we said that attach is the procedure that adds a subscriber to the list of subscribers of a particular publisher, the list called subscribe. So all that we have to do is subscribe.extend of S. Remember that extend is the procedure from lists that adds an element at the end. And everything here should be non void So how do we trigger an event? Well, that is the, the responsibility of the procedure of publish. And all it uh, needs to do, and this is where really the beauty of the object-oriented approach shows up uh, once again. All, all that it really needs to do is to tell every subscriber, hey you subscriber, uh, 10 minutes ago, or 10 milliseconds ago, or 10 microseconds ago, or maybe 10 years ago, you told me that you were interested in me, you are interested in my events. Well, uh, I, have, I have something of interest for, for, for you, I have an event now, my user just clicked the left button of her mouse, so update yourself, uh, wake up. Uh, we could also have called update if wake up. So this is what we do across subscribe as A. So this means, uh, as I'm sure you remember from the loop syntax, that we're going to traverse the subscribe loop and call each current element A. And for the, uh, when the current element at the cursor position is A, we do uh, A, U subscriber, A dot item. You know, A is the cursor, the actual list element, the actual subscriber is A dot item. Update yourself. And what is update? Update is this procedure, which as we saw, is deferred at the level of the deferred class subscriber, but which each subscriber class, each variant of the notion of subscriber, has effected, meaning implemented in its own way, to do whatever the update thing is for that particular kind of subscriber, save a file, uh, uh, launch a ship, uh, pay an employee, whatever that is. So that is, of course, the responsibility of every single subscriber. And so this works. With the magic of dynamic binding, then update is going to call the right version. So we have here the subscribe list, and we have to remember, of course, that the various subscribers can be of different actual types. We, we had this hierarchy where we saw that there was a particular subscriber sub one, another one sub two, and so on. So each one of the objects in this list here can be of a different type, although all these types conform to subscriber, and each one has its own version of update. So with dynamic binding, this all works. Now, there are a number of important characteristics, uh, which in some cases are also limitations about the observer pattern. 
the publishers know about the subscribers. Well, this is not so much that the publisher class knows about the subscriber, it's that internally the publisher objects have the list subscribe, which has a list of the subscribers. So this is usually okay. We might want, in line with the MVC principle, a somewhat more indirect relationship between the publisher objects and the subscriber objects but there is no particular catastrophe here at this point. What is a bit more worrisome is that at least in the basic uh, scheme uh, of the pattern as I've described it, e each subscriber class only has one update procedure. So it means that in the end it's going to subscribe to at most one publisher. Well, it could subscribe to several publishers, but that makes little sense. Uh, be, be, because it would have to do the same thing for all the publishers and that doesn't happen very often in practice that you do the same thing regardless of the event type. Well, it could happen, but in the basic scheme you subscribe to one publisher and you subscribe one operation because there's only one update procedure which is going to be affected from the deferred version in class subscriber. Also something which is not mentioned here but which is worth mentioning is that it's not very easy in this scheme to deal with arguments, event arguments. Of course, it's possible, otherwise people wouldn't be using the observer pattern very widely, but it's not easy to do in a standardized fashion. You have to code it differently for each particular case. So what do I mean by event arguments? Well, it's very common, it's very common that an event has arguments. So if I have an event which is just <coughs> bang on the table, that doesn't have any arguments, except maybe the loudness of the bang. Actually, even in that case, there might be an argument, right? I, I, I can have a low-level bang, or I can have a <coughs> very high-level bang, and so the intensity of the bang might be the argument. Now, if I have a mouse click, then the arguments, obviously, are going to be the x and the y, the coordinates of, of the mouse click, and so on, just about every kind, uh, or, or at least most kinds of interesting events have arguments, that is to say they are interesting not just because they occurred, but also because of the circumstances uh, in which they occur, like the coordinates in the case of a mouse click. And so you will need to pass these arguments to uh, the corresponding update procedure, and it's actually not that hard to do in every specific case, but it's not easy to do in a standard way. And so this is the principal reason why the observer pattern is not really a reusable solution. A reusable solution would be a component, for example, the class with its features that you would put into a library and that people would then use whenever they need to apply the pattern. And that is not the case with patterns in general and the observer pattern in particular. What patterns are, are more of a general architectural scheme as I introduced the notion of pattern and it gives you ideas, it gives you standard practices, what at the beginning I called best practices, but you still have to implement the pattern anew for every application of it in your programs. So what we've seen in this segment is a simple but very important notion, the notion of observer, which is a particular case of the general notion of a design pattern. There are many other classical design patterns. We'll see a couple more during later lectures. Observer is one of the most important. It's very widely used, but it has the limitations that I just mentioned. And in the next segment, we will see how we can, by moving one level of abstraction up, have a scheme for implementing publish subscribe mechanism. Many other situations which retains the benefits of observer but removes the limitation thanks to a better use of language mechanisms and language abstractions.